Hello everyone, this is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University and this is the introduction to drawing for designers class and this is an exercise on how to construct a triangle, a square and an hexagon using a straight edge uh, or a triangle and a compass. And before I begin, I'm just going to go over the different tools and the materials that we're going to use. Um, And we're going to we're going to draw a um, again a triangle or square and an hexagon, one on top of one another, and we're going to do it on this uh, Bristol board. Um, and this is another version of it. Um, if you have nine by twelve paper, that's great. If you have eight and a half by eleven, uh, that's okay too. Although it's likely going to be thinner, so ideally the Bristol paper is better. Um, and you'll still need to do a, um, a title block around your drawing, uh, regardless what size you're using, that is half inch all around and uh, three quarter inch at the bottom uh, for the space where to put the, uh, where to put the, all the information for the drawing, okay? So let's start with paper. Um, I sent a, a, I made another little video about uh, paper for drafting and I, uh, Bristol is, I'm not sure if it's a brand name, I think it's a city in England, and maybe that's where it comes from. Um, this is a Stratmore pad. The one I recommended actually in the previous video is a Canson pad. It's actually even, even better, but Stratmore is okay too. Um, so it's eight and a half, it's uh, 300 pounds, let's see, no, 300 grams. Um, 100 pound in American measurement and 270 grams per square meter in European uh, weights. So it's pretty, pretty stiff. Uh, and let's go ahead and tape that to your board. Now, if you have, um, you're not going to see the edges here, but um, if you had a board that had, say, a T and you had a T square. Um, what you would want to do is you'd want to align your paper with the edge, with the T-square that's running parallel to the edge of your board, right? Let's say your desk, but you need a nice edge on the left side. Um, otherwise, you might have to do everything uh, with two triangles, which is fine too. Meaning once you once you set up your drawing, then you're just going to use two triangles to do parallel lines in both directions. Okay. Um, so again, you can't see the very edge, but what I'm going to do, you can either use drafting tape, which is pretty good. Um, and you want to put it on the corner. Um, in this fashion so that it doesn't so that the sheet doesn't move so if this was your your board then you know you might have a t-square here to you know move up and down um, anyway if this is your sheet just put the the tape like that um, kind of flattening it out so that there is no air bubbles Another thing you can use instead of drafting tape is drafting dots, which is actually pretty neat. Um, they're basically little stickers that uh, are a little better than drafting tape because the triangles and the tools don't catch on the edges of the tape as much. Um, okay, so obviously those you would put on your corner there like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape, and this is very important that you really tape your uh, drawing if you're doing drafting because, um, well, because then you have a fixed reference and you know that once you, once you start doing your lines uh, properly, they're all gonna be relative to the same oriented piece of paper, okay? Uh, I'm gonna tape in such a way that I leave a space for my half inch 
um, half inch uh, border, okay? Which actually I'm gonna do right away so that we get that out of the way. Okay, so you can see it a little bit in the video. Um, so my, again, my paper is um, nine by 12 and ideally you wanna get that, okay? Cause it's a better paper. Um, but regardless, let's do a title block now, which is a, a border and a title block. And the things you're gonna need for this type of drawing is a mechanical pencil, which is gonna have lead, graphite lead inside. Okay, that you need to push here to make it go in and out. And we're gonna sharpen that either with a low tech piece of sandpaper or a high tech, only slightly higher tech uh, gadget that actually is made exactly for this type of, of pencils. Um, and there's many kinds, well, not many kinds, but many models. These are just some of the ones I've collected over the years. They're nice, they're a nice weight. They're very different from what you probably used to, which is this type, which is the type that has the lead, very thin lead inside, and you just click, 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 and the lead comes out, and they come in different um, 0.5 millimeter, 0.7 millimeter. And I understand the attraction of these gadgets because they're so convenient, right? The problem is that the, um, the lead is uh, usually too soft and also breaks easily. And also, you never get um, really a nice, nice point. Um, regardless of how thick the lead is, you always get kind of a blunt end to it, okay? Whereas with this other kind, um, you're gonna always get a very, very sharp point and we'll see that in a moment, okay, when I sharpen it. So with this, you can go down to 100 and, no, 250th of an inch, which I'm not sure what that is in terms of millimeters, but I'm sure it's less than um, even 0 0.3, 0 0.5 or 0.7 millimeter. Um, there is one little nifty thing about these, again, attractive ones that I don't like, which is that you can get colored leads for it, um, which are really nice to do special drawings. Um, but again, they're a little bit too precious and I don't recommend them for, for, this, um, for these drafting uh, exercises. Okay, actually I'm gonna need another piece of paper to do my practice here. Let's just use that. Uh, before I start drawing, so I talk a little bit about how to sharpen the, um... okay, so you're gonna need the mechanical pencil with the lead, and the lead you want is 2H, and sometimes they come with that, sometimes they don't, so that's just a hardness, meaning, uh, you know, you're used to HB perhaps, right, which is number two, and then you might have uh, going, let's see, I forget which way the hardness goes, Maybe it goes to the left, you might have H, you might have 2H, 3H, etc. What we want is 2H, and then on this side you might have B, 2B, 3B, etc. Um, okay, so that's what you want to use. Now, for the purposes of this drawing, I'm actually going to use a softer lead because otherwise it won't show in the video um, as much. But that's the hardness you want. Um, and that goes also for the lead that is in the, that is in the compass um, to make your circles. Uh, again, 2H. Again, for the purpose of the drawings, uh, drawing, I'm gonna be using HB just so that it's easier to see. Um, and I'll show you how to, how to sharpen that as well. Um, so. So I'm going to just stick with one now. I'll just say that's my mechanical pencil. 
I'll say this is my compass. Well, it is because it's the one I used in college myself. It's a Kern. It's made in Switzerland. It was super expensive when I bought it. Um, but now you can get away with maybe a $10, $15 compass. Um, there was one in the video that I, that I did. Um, but I recommend that you check with your relatives because uh, what if they have a, a gorgeous old compass lying around in the attic or in the basement or in the pantry or in the, the den? Um, and if you're lucky, you might get a Copernicus 7, which is, in this case, a German-made compass that is like a jewel case and has this beautiful, you know, kind of velvet case, and it's got all kinds of compasses. Uh, and these usually are very, very good. The best thing is that they work on friction so that there's a screw there as opposed to these guys, the newer ones, which also work on friction, but usually the friction is not good enough to hold it so it doesn't move while you're drawing your circles. Um, in another video, I will show you how these tools were used. For example, this is called the ruling pen. And this was so that you, see if I can open it. No, this one can't be opened, uh, but this one can. Yeah. So you would actually put ink in there or gouache and you would draw your lines. Okay, but that's for another time. So again, check your, you know, your uncle, your aunt, anybody that might have been in the, in some kind of, design or engineering profession, and they might have such a thing lying around. Um, got a little closure here. Okay, something is in the way. Um, yeah, so my compass is a Kern 2, which is not the, a Kern B rather, rather than being the A set, which was the and even already when I bought it in 1980, hmm, maybe, um, it pretends to be vel velvet, but it's actually plastic. But it's, it's very precise. That's the one I'm going to use, okay? So mechanical pencil, you might need an eraser, um, compass, and two triangles. And these are the triangles that I had in the video. Uh, they're actually quite good because they're precise. Uh, but if you get some that have uh, no markings, these are Alvin, and these are also quite good. You just have the extra step of taking measurements with a different tool, which might be a straight edge. And this straight edge is called a Lumicolor. Um, I guess that's the brand. It's very good. Uh, but regardless of what you get, you should make sure all your tools, uh, let me see if they match, match one another. Because if they don't, then you might get into trouble, of course. Yeah, so in this, in this case, there's a super minor difference there. You can't see it in the video, but it's there. I would say it's okay, you know, it's so minor. Um, but um, there was another tool that I tried, but actually, yeah, I tried them against another set of special rulers that I have, and these are quite expensive. I think they're maybe $30 for the set, uh, but they are called Shadler rulers, and they are um, they're made of mylar, which is this very stable, strong material. And it's so precise that it has little tick marks for 30, uh, for 60 fourths of an inch, okay? It also has uh, typographic points and picas, millimeters and half millimeters. And for graphic designers, it has, um, let's see, decimal inches. Yeah, decimal inches and very important, uh, desktop publishing picas which are different, well, slightly, slightly, slightly bigger than old-fashioned typographic picas. It's very, very minor, but normally there's about six picas to the inch, 
um, and with old type it's it's slightly less um, and this if you're going to be a graphic designer you should get one of these it's a it's a type gauge or printer's gauge and it has picas and it has a little hook there so that you can measure things for example this wooden leather it's 10 picas which means it's 120 points tall or that's the type size and the height is about it's a little bit less than an inch so that means it's the same as everything else um, in terms of type of metal type okay but what i was going to do is actually check my because i trust this to be my best tool in terms of measuring i'm going to test now my my ruler uh, with the inches and i only have nine inches here so i'm going to test that I'm gonna line up the two ends right there. And it's very, very good. And it's also just a hair, but you can't, it's probably like, I don't know, 125th of an inch off. So anyway, it goes to show you that things, you know, every manufacturer is better or not as good. Um, so as long as you're comfortable with what you have and you don't have surprises, um, that's okay. All right. So I think I went through all the tools. Um, yeah, the other tool would be if you have a board and you have a T-square, you would be moving your T-square up and down the edge of your board. Or even better, if you had you know, some extra money, um, I can't show you the board that I'm using now, but it came with a parallel edge uh, by Mayline, which is the best brand for this kind of tool. And this Mayline goes up and down. It has a, a wire here and you can adjust it. And this would give me all the horizontals, okay? But for this exercise, in theory, um, all you need is a straight edge and a compass. And now I'll show both straight edge and triangle, okay? So I'm gonna clear up a little bit. And I'm going to make sure my leads are okay and sharp. Um, the other thing you're going to need is actually a, um, some tracing paper later for a check, okay? And this is the pad that I recommended from Stratmore. Uh, tracing paper is you know, just a translucent, translucent paper. So you can see through and it's not precious or expensive, so you don't have to worry about messing up with it. All right, so we need the compass, we need the mechanical pencil, maybe the maybe the razor. Um, I'll leave one with the a compass with the that you might have which has that wheel. That way you can I can show you how you can adjust that one. Um, Okay, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and use the triangles that have the markings. Uh, they're convenient for measuring, or I could use my straight edge too. So once again, 2H is the lead you're going to use. You should use that. Um, and I know, I know the mechanical pencil might not come with that. So in which case, ideally, you would want to get extra leads, extra graphite leads separately. I have some here. Um, yeah. You can draw with HP. It's just not as precise. It's just not as clean. Okay. Um, anyway, these are just, yeah. Extra lead somewhere there. Yeah. And I'm going, I'm going to show you now first with, well, let's say first with the, uh, with this gadget that I have, there is a, I don't have not the one that is made by Stedler. This is made by another company. 
uh, but they all work on the same principle. They have a, a grinder inside um, and the, the mechanical pencil goes in at an angle so that it creates, you know, the sharp, sharp edge there. It's a little tricky. You, there are some gauges here, but I never use them. I just put in a lot of it and I put it in. And it is a, they have a tendency to, if, because it wobbles, um, what you want to do is hold it, kind of try to center it inside that hole as you turn it. And you hold the, you hold the, um, no, if that's too much, you hold the base of the pencil so that, um, so that you keep it centered again. And you hear it, let's see. And you, you feel and it's kind of grinding it, okay? And it should, when it stops sort of making noise, it's basically done. Uh, it takes a little practice because you might break it first, but. And now I forgot to grab a little rag because what happens is when you, it, there is a little filter here, a little, foamy thing that you can use to clean it. Um, and normally I just use a piece of cloth. I'm gonna use my handkerchief. Lead is not really lead, right? It's graphite, so don't worry about that. You, get, you won't get poisoned. It's graphite, which I guess is really carbon. Um, is it? And uh, clay, different mixes of clay um, to make it harder or soft. And sometimes what I do is I just finish it off like this. Okay, that's very sharp. I don't know if I can show how sharp it is. Yeah, there you go. I'm using a loop, which is a tool, again, for the typographer or letterpress printer. Um, so by comparison, let's take even a, a 0.5. which is the click, 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 very attractive tools that you all have, which I don't like. Um, you can see it's sharper on the left, right? Um, and the thing about them is also they don't break as easily. Okay. So now you have to be careful because this could be, could hurt you. And when you draw your lines, you want to um, rotate I don't know if you can see, but I'm actually turning my my mechanical pencil because that way it wears out evenly instead of just one side. Uh, I'm not sure if this is already HB in there. Yeah, okay, so this is HB, which I'm using just for the video, but you should use um, 2H. And the same for the compass. Now the compass, you want to have the, uh, point sharpen in this fashion, okay? That's because in theory, you want it to be so close to the point, to the pointer pointer, um, that you can get very, very small circles. And also because, um, yeah, it's just, it's just the way it is <laughs> for the compass. So the way to do it is to just sharpen it, uh, moving the compass up and down, sorry, like this. Um, and for that, you definitely need a piece of, tracing paper, I mean, uh, sandpaper, which is kind of messy. This is a little pad of li different sheets. And I'm going to replace this now with, okay, I'm gonna replace it with a piece that is HB, again, in fact, so that I can really see, rather you can see, I can see it, but in the video. Okay, so now leave it a little bit longer because you're gonna chop, you know, you're gonna send away, okay? So, uh, so the trick is when you do it, to not uh, tilt it, you know, to kind of don't make it wobbly and also don't lift it up too much or too low, right? So in other words, it would be maybe like that and you just go back and forth. So let's just go ahead and do it. Of course, now it's gonna make a mess. So let's try to prevent that. 
uh, because this is HP, it will, it's, it's also making a bigger mess than 2H would, would. Okay, clean it up. And that's it. Uh, in fact, what we want though, we want the uh, lead to be slightly uh, higher. That means when I put the compass down into my paper, and by the way, make, make some, uh, put some extra paper underneath so that your, your little tip of the compass there can really go inside the paper. Um, okay, what I'm saying is we need to make this lead come down a little bit or go up depending which way you're looking. But make sure you don't twist it so that, for example, now that's off because it's twisted. Okay, so what I want is to make sure it's straight. Like a, almost like a, a skating um, blade, you know, on your ice skating shoes. If you have ever done that, I've never done it. Um, okay, so that's pretty good. Um, yeah, what I was saying is that you want, if this is your paper, and paper does have thickness, okay, you want your compass to be able to go inside that paper, right? And in the old days, we all used boards that were like wooden boards. So the pin would go maybe even inside the wood. But now sometimes the surfaces are too too shiny. Um, okay. Anyway, the reason you want this to go into the paper is so it doesn't move around, right? All right. And now I'm just going to demo real quick how to use the... Again, when you're drawing a line, you just, um, you don't wanna, if this is, let's see if I can show it, if this is your triangle, you don't wanna, you know, do bend the pencil too much either way, right? You kinda wanna make it pretty straight. Um, turn it, turn the pencil around, the mechanical pencil around, and, um, and with the compass, let's say I'm gonna make a, a six inch diameter circle. Okay, so what I do is I make a marking of three inches. Um, I might make a little stronger crossing because that way I really see uh, where I am. And now with the compass, you want to do it. Um, let's see, I'll do it here. It's hard to really hit it right on if you're like, you know, it's not like. It's almost like throwing a dart. You don't want to be throwing darts, right? You want to be really controlling it. So make sure you use two hands to get it right in the right spot like that. And once you get it in the right spot, what you want to do is take your measure, your reading here. And if it's, if it's off, you'll see it just by drawing that. So I'm off. So just keep trying until, you know, just adjust it. Um, with this hand, you know, I'm holding it up here, but I'm using my other hand to adjust it now until I hit it. Okay, and when you're satisfied that that's pretty good, let's see if I can show it. There we go, yeah, that's pretty good. So um, it's, it's that longer. Usually I do a longer mark every time so I know which one it is, the last one that I made. So when, you, when you're ready to go, you want to drag the compass. So it means you hold it here, don't hold it here because it's gonna move, move. And then you want to drag like using a broom, okay? And it's hard to see my grip now because it's in front of the camera, but, um, but what I'm doing is don't pressing too hard and just, just drag it. You don't want to push, because if you push, it might kick off the, uh, the little point there. Okay. And of course, ideally, the compass is not gonna move so that the circle stays you know, true throughout. All right. So 
um, yeah, if we were to use this other compass instead, which is more likely what you have, let's do another one. So maybe it's a four inch circle. Um, a little cross is always a good thing. In other words, if I have a spot like that, it's so much easier to try to get that, you know, where is that? Whereas if I just have a dot, oh, I don't know, it could be here, it could be there, it could be there. This is very clear where it is. Um, so same thing, you just, just first point it there, then you try, if it's not precise, you move it again until it is, and then you just make your circle. And you can see this compass has a harder lead, um, and it shows up less on the video as well. Um, okay. All right. So that was a long introduction to the tools. Um, might as well go ahead and show you how to do the uh, how to do the border and the title block. And the trick is to measure as little as possible, meaning as few times as possible and do most of your work using the triangles or whatever tools, other tools you have, the T-square. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just measure once, once all around, instead of say measuring one here and one here and then drawing a line, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna measure half inch. Um, all around. Okay. And once I do that, um, well, let's see, I can use the edge of the paper here. That's cause it's nice and thick and I'm going to use my, my triangle. Now you'll see it doesn't go all the way. So what I do is I start a little light. Um, and here's how you use your tools. You hold one tool down with one hand like this. Make sure your hand is also on the paper so the tool is, is you know, it's, it's held. And then as you move the other tools, some fingers might be free to kind of then lock, lock your tool so you're ready to make your line and it doesn't move when you're making your line. Okay, I'll show it again in the, using two triangles. Um, now the paper itself may not be square, okay? Um, oh, I forgot one thing, which I think I showed in the previous video, but just to make sure we don't, um, the way to check your triangles to see if they're good is to draw a line like this, okay? And then flip it and see if it matches. Okay, and it does, and that in this way it tells you that your triangle square corner is true a true square. But what I was saying is that your paper may not be perfectly square. It doesn't really matter for the title block; it's not that crucial. Um, but in general, try don't trust that things are what they appear to be. So what I would do to get a perfect now. Uh, perpendicular to the other line instead of doing the opposite and doing this which you can't see here now but I'm putting my triangle down here and doing this which is fine right but really and let's try to do it and see what we get but really this is assuming that my paper is square right and you might say well how come it's not square of course it's square well no because machines are not you know, super precise, especially if it's just for a pad of paper and not for a, you know, a rocket part. Um, so, but now I'm just gonna believe that it might be right. Well, let's double check. The way we double check is we now line that up. Now my head is gonna get in the way. Let's see if I, yeah. I line that up like this and then I slide my triangle and I see if this matches and it's actually pretty good yeah so that means my paper pad is actually quite good so um, so now just for the sake of time I'll just finish this off freehand so to speak um, 
normally what you would do is make these lines actually quite thin at first. And again, they really are starting to show up very thick and I'm not used to that because I like to make them really thin, but for the video I have to do this. So then once you do the sort of construction, then you might go back and darken, meaning make it more sharp, just the line itself, right? Okay. Um, does it reach? Yes. Okay. Uh, and this is true for the drawing that we're going to do of the shapes as well, okay? So you start out with thin lines, light lines, and you finish off, once you know it's correct, you finish off with uh, darker lines. Uh, notice how sometimes what I do is I start at the end, but I don't go all the way, I start at the other end, because that way I know I can get perfect starts and ends. Um, it's really hard to, it's easy to start, but it's hard to end on a, on a dead point there. Okay. Uh, so let's do the title block real quick. So that would be three quarter inches at the bottom, plus about sort of an inch in the middle there. Um, oh, is that in the middle? And just to be clear, so if you have inches, you know, your bigger marks are going to be in between, are going to be half inches. Um, and then between that, you're going to have quarter inches, between that, eight inches, and between that, sixteenth of an inch. And I'm not going to go into a how I eight inches because uh, that would be a <laughs> too much talking. But yeah, they're not fun. Uh, millimeters are much easier. Okay, so where were we? Yeah, so we determined this was a nice edge to use, so I'm gonna use it again to make my title block. And again, I'm gonna go light. And now I'm gonna do also a couple of lines for my, for my lettering, okay? And, and you can see if you had like a parallel edge, you know, one of those basically machines, um, or a T-square, how things would be, you know, faster because you always have those horizontals ready-made, so to speak. Uh, and the divisions here, they're going to be depending on how your information is going to be, right? So we're going to, I'm just going to make them up now, kind of eyeballing what they might be. Um, and the information is in I learned for what goes in here, but basically, of course, your name the name of the drawing. Uh, and now you can try, there is also a whole, a whole section on lettering, which I don't do anymore as, a, as, a, as an assignment, but if you had some lines like that, you might put your name you know, inside, maybe at a little bit, at an angle, like a little bit italic. Okay, just try to be neat, okay? So, Forget now if the name goes as the, as the first thing, but just the fact that there are these two lines makes it neat looking. Um, oops. And we're almost ready to start the actual construction. Okay, so there is a, in iLearn, I believe there is a sample and the sample, let's see, did I write how much, how far it is? Yeah. So, yeah, I made it in such a way that it, it's, it's a little bit higher. Um, let's just say it's one inch. Yeah. One inch from the title block. So what we do is we start, let me take a piece of tracing paper and, and show you the process of what we're going to do. And this is really just to practice using the triangles because and the compass because you might not have used them in the past, except perhaps in middle school. Um, so we're gonna, you know, we have the title block here. We're gonna draw a line at one inch. Um, then we're gonna measure three inches. We're gonna center it, you know, relative to everything else. 
And then using a compass, we're going to draw some arcs like this, pointing on the edges, on the corners of that line. And that's going to be the first shape, which is going to be a triangle. Okay. Then on top of that, we're going to, using the same edge, we're going to do a square with a straight edge, meaning instead of using these to get the edges, you know, the sides perfect aligned, um, what we'll do is we'll create a circle here. We're going to have two points, and then with an arbitrary measure of my compass, I'm going to find the spot exactly above the middle point here. We're going to draw a line that goes up, and that gives us the left edge of the uh, of the square. And then using the compass, I'm going to bring that this point over to the top and I get the top left corner. And then again, using the same measurement from there and from here, I get that other spot. And that gives us the square, which is just using a straight edge. And the hexagon is actually quite simple because the original triangle is basically times six makes an hexagon. So what we'll do is we'll make a circle with the same radius, okay, as the original triangle. And then we just take that base and we just repeat it um, six times, and that gives us the other edges. And then we connect it, okay, um, obviously using the tools. And it makes, it's kind of makes sense that obviously your square would be aligned with that top part too. And then to make sure that this is correct, um, what you want to do is mark off, um, mark, let's say the hexagon, okay? You want to mark off the corners and then you want to rotate this, your little, trace to see if it still matches. And if, if these dots don't match, something is off. Something may be longer, shorter, whatever, okay? So let's just do that now. Um, I got my, because it's so soft, it's already not as sharp. Uh, but again, for the sake of the video, I'm gonna say that's okay. Um, well, let's just use a straight edge because, um, except for up for the except perhaps for the very beginning, which is the first line at one and an inch, one inch from the from the title block. Okay. Now, if I didn't have that triangle and I know that this line is good at the bottom here, again, I can use that now as my my new kind of reference line. So I could line it up. And again, look how I'm holding the triangle. So I'm holding in such a way that part of my hand is down on the paper, part of it is on the triangle, and part is free to then lock onto the moving triangle once I know that that's what I wanna do, okay? So now that I, I'm in the right spot, in this case, I'm gonna use my thumb to lock it. Um, I draw my line and I'm going to do it fairly light. Well, again, let me do it dark only for the video, but you should be doing it light. Um, I need the center and I could find it with special constructions, but I'm just going to measure it. So this particular, now let's see, let's not get confused. It's 11 inches inside. So it's five and a half right here. Okay, so I always like to get like a median divider or center line just to have as a reference point. It can, it can always be useful. So we said we're gonna draw three inches is the base. Okay, right here, three inches. So let's measure three inches. Yeah, let's, let's try see if we can not use the triangle at all. Um, 
So let's measure two inches, which means an inch and a half on both side, sides. Okay, one and two. Um, yeah, it's hard to get away from the triangles. I like to have my little crossings there, so. Because it's easier to see for me. And now the first one is very, very simple. I take my compass, I point. Remember again, grab it with two hands. Uh, help yourself to get it in the right spot. You know, firmly point it. Make sure you have some padding underneath so that again, it doesn't skid. And then get your reading. And again, if you're off, um, you know, no worries, right? Let's see. Where are you? There we go. If you're off, just keep trying until it's right on. And again, I do a little longer line to know to know which one is the last time made. Yeah, it's hard to see, but it's there. So once you're satisfied, oh, by the way, now we're going to have a test and see if my line that I drew earlier is actually correct because, in fact, I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> That's a giveaway, right? And I'm a little off. It's actually the line is a little bit too tilting to the left. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but it's pretty good. So that's my first shape. Um, I'm now just going to, again, if you want to be elegant, you could do first a light line like that. I mean, who doesn't want to be elegant, right? So and then another light line, you can hardly see, and now I'm going to darken it. And again, I start at the two ends and I go towards the middle because that way the start is always a safe operation. It's the ending that's tough. Yeah, this, this lead is so soft, it's hard to control and my lines are not getting out very even, but um, you can see it changes a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually sharpen it a little bit more. And sometimes you can just use your blue jeans. <laughs> okay. So now let's do the next one. So now I, I'm not going to have the aid of that line. So this is going to be even a better test. So what we do now is we just, we need to draw a line that's perfectly vertical relative to this horizontal. And by the way, that just means 90 degrees, right? So if you had a protractor, which again, you might remember from middle school, if that's my center, it just means that my line, if it starts there, it has to cut at 90 degrees there, right? Starting from here, zero to 90. Um, so, how do we do that? We take an arbitrary circle, let's just say, you know, whatever, anything really, as long as you get it onto the horizontal line. Oops, I just went inside the title block, it doesn't matter. Um, and then these two new points, I'm now gonna use to do two other arbitrary circles. Um, I mean, you know, they could be the same length, but they could be more, let's just say more. And I'm gonna create a little cross point at the top. So again, arbitrary, this is at the same distance from here to here and from here to here. So with the same now arbitrary arc, I find a spot that should be perfectly. And I'm gonna do it now light, light. See if I got it right. I could use a number of things, so I'm gonna use the protractor. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I could also just check with my triangle to see if it is in fact square. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna darken yet because I don't know exactly where the ending is, right? Uh, the ending, however, because it is a square, 
I can bring it up from the base. So from here, I can just bring it up there. And that spot is going to be the top of my square. Uh, but that's only, well, let's darken it so that we see it. That's only the left side. Now we need the right side and the top. And very, very simple with the same aperture. Now I point there and I point here to get a crossing here in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so I'll take a measurement again and then right there. I could draw the full circle if you want it to be really, what's the word, flamboyant. There you go. Wow, you don't really need it. But, um, and then do the same thing here. And voila. I got that nice crossing. That's now my corner. And again, I do it very light first. So all this work to do a square when I could have done it with just a triangle, but I think it's good practice to use the compass this way. Because especially later when we do the cube project, you're gonna to need to use the concept in a very precise way. So, now I darken it. And there's no measurements to, to write down here, okay? Just just draw, do the drawing, no, no need to write down three inches or whatnot. Okay, so now the hexagon. So the hexagon, we said that a triangle like this, which is equilateral, all the, and regular. By the way, these are regular shapes because the edges or the sides rather, and the angles are all the same. Um, yeah, so this using again the same radius, and I'm just gonna make sure to make sure my compass hasn't moved. Now I'm gonna do a circle that's going to inscribe my, my hexagon. Okay, so ideally, if you just point here now and I already have one because from before, and then I do the next one and it matches the extension of this, it makes sense because it's an hexagon. So if the base of my triangle is here, the opposite base will be up there. Um, so the trick now will be to see if this last one is correct and the same size. Yeah, pretty good, great. Okay, um, whatever you do, and now I know I should do this to show you, but if I do, then I mock up that spot. So it's, yeah, just refrain from like making all these dark blotches on top, just, just keep it clean. Um, so again, I'm going to you have to, when you draw your line, you have to leave a little room for your lead to get in there, right? So don't place the triangle exactly on top of that spot because then the line is gonna be over from it. Um, again, a light line. Uh, cross your lines, it looks prettier that way. <laughs> it looks more like construction. Um, And we're almost done. And then we're just gonna have to check. So again, very light at first, crossing the lines, looks pretty, looks nice, looks precise. Um, and then when, you, when you're good, then you can go back and, and do them thicker, okay? Um, and even though, since you have to upload these drawings, you know, taking a picture and so forth. And even though by using 2H, they're gonna be less visible, I still want you to use 2H if you can get the lead, okay? Well, it's just more precise. So, okay. Again, I'm going now from the opposite ends of the line towards the middle 
fading out a little bit in the middle so that it doesn't get too thick in the middle. Okay, that's our hexagon. And so now the test um, is with the trace, tracing paper, let's see, with a clean piece of tracing paper. And I'm gonna do different tests. First, I'm gonna test the triangle. So literally, all, all you're gonna do is just like, in this case, yes, make three little, three little blobs right on top of the corners and then just rotate it to see if the three dots still match once you rotate. And I would say with a triangle, triangle after the first rotation, you can be pretty much sure that it's correct if, if they do match, okay? Right? So let's try with the square. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it could have happened that somehow the, you know, the, uh, let's say your, your square was a little bit off. In other words, the lines may be maybe like still the same length, right? Right, so let's say your square might have been something like that. So let's check this square. I know it's bad, right? Because I made it bad. So if I, now we can't see it. Um, it's on my paper. Um, if I rotate this now, let's see if it still matches. And you can see it doesn't match, right? they're off. In other words, once you make two of them match, the other two are sort of all over the place. So that's the trick. You have to, you have to rotate it. So let's try it again. And they have to match every time you rotate them. Okay, so you turn it and it still matches and if you want to make absolutely sure you can turn it again but after two or three turns i would say that's it so now let's try the hexagon we're running out of paper and the next shape which i'm going to do in a separate video which is the pentagon is going to be a little trickier so this is very important I'm gonna make double circles here so that I know which are the ones I'm looking at. Okay, so let's rotate this guy. And so line up a couple and it's pretty good. Okay, so that's the test. All right. So that's the uh, triangle square an hexagon using straight edge and compass. Okay, and we didn't even have to use the eraser. Fantastic. All right, see you for the next video about the Pentagon.